As we journey through life, we all encounter ebbs and flows, many highs and lows. We often come across stumbling blocks that leave us feeling quite disheartened or unsure about how to move back to the realm of possibility and positivity. No matter what we undergo, we all can embrace the journey, tap into the tools to push through and overcome, and find the beauty in the ashes. This is Odyssey with Yendi, Beauty in the Ashes. I don't know what I'm going to say. Auntie Donna, yes. Miss Donna, Donna Girl, the people, them princess, the people, them queen, the people, them champion. It's so lovely to see you. Oh, thank you. And thank you for inviting me here, Wendy, in this nice, beautiful setting where it is so cool. It's my pleasure to be here. You know, say, Auntie Donna, you start dancing, but we know so you're not so you're saying. <laughs> you know, we're chipping. We're chipping. Yeah, we're chipping there, like an ice chip. You're the chip ice. You get a big piece, you get a small piece. Yeah. So we're getting Auntie a little piece yes. right now. We are chip. I got all. You can call me Auntie Donna, because the world knows me as that. Some mm -hmm. call me Donna. Um, you know, anyone, but Auntie Donna suits me Many well. We love Auntie Donna. Oh, uh, thank you. Not just the name, yeah. the person. Uh, I see you, Auntie Donna, look at what you do. Yes. And my heart is so. Filled. Oh. So filled. I never know you're... you watch me when. No, you... Me watch everything. Not Wendy, man. Wendy. It's all right. Me <laughs> accustomed to it. <laughs> I, I never watch, you and watch I see me. everything. Wow. And I am, I am inspired by you. Oh my God. Don't say that. Man. Let me drop down. No, man. Although I'll, I'm sitting I'll down. I'll pick you up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> tell, me, tell me about who Donna Go is. Who is Auntie Donna? Well, it's two different persons. Auntie Donna. He's the philanthropist, the humanitarian. And Dana Gow is just the baker um, who loves to laugh, who loves to chat, you know? Love excitement and <laughs> all the little things that come with it. Well, Auntie Dana is a bit different. She's more out there, fierce, and don't care, and loves to help people, yeah. and loves to be blunt. You know, just give it to you raw, give jokes. Auntie Dana is the one that will entertain yeah, you. Yeah. Will, will, Take you out of your city and let you sit on the ground. <laughs> she, you know, she's you that sure it's type. not me that? I remember <laughs> saying we didn't go down a ground before, yeah. you know, if you come up back. Yeah. Uh, yes, that's Auntie Dana. You yeah. know, that's Auntie Dana. Versatile. She can, she's capable of doing so many things. Yeah. She can just chip in, chip out, chip back in. And you know, she used to talk about her head being chipped. But she's not too chip, no head, you know, she had chip eyes. <laughs> you know, and let it melt. I love it. Oh, Ooh. thank you. So, Let's talk a bit about what the world has come to know you for. Charity. And I said the world, you know, because you know your thing is not local. Oh, yes. I and know. it is charity. You mentioned yes. yourself as a philanthropist and as a humanitarian, and you do it in a way that makes it, it almost makes it cool. Yes. You yes, know, normally yes. people do it on them hearty tighty, but you say, no, this is who we get this yes. for. You roll it up in your paper. And you said, this come from so-and-so, call to many people, let yes, see. Yes, yeah. yes, Where yes. does that come from? Okay, well, um, I'm a very honest person to be actually, Wendy. I believe that if I'm doing something, um, there shouldn't be, you know, anky-panky around the corner. Yeah. I believe that um, when I came with the Game Changer for charity, it wasn't something that me sit down and plan it and say, you know what, I'm going to hold my phone and I'm going to go in on social media and do this. It was just actually a lady buying puddings from me. Mm -hmm. And um, she said to me, you know, yeah, be a pudding and... Food not sell. So I said, Jamaica, at the time, I didn't have any charity. So persons were just know me as the cake woman and the pudding woman. And uh, she saw me doing a lot on social media. And she said, I want to support you and buy it for your pudding. But maybe we are America. So if it tastes good, um, my family is going to come and buy. She did send them. And she said, oh my God, them said the pudding tastes good. I want to give two persons minds when I buy it from you. And actually, she did. So when she buy the pudding, them know when they... I said to her, oh, am I, you're going to see who I gave it to. She said, you know, Matt, I trust you, just give somebody. And I said, no, I want you to become, I know you feel like, mm -hmm. I take your money. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I was sending to the, the, the video to her via WhatsApp and it wasn't going through. So I said, you know, I'm going to post it for my IG so she can see. And actually, Wendy, that was the inborn of the charity. I send it. So person, some person were a bit negative. Why should I get somebody to put and she have to put it up in her phone? You know, I never even take it because I never even, I wasn't even thinking about any charity well, or you know anything. I just wanted the person to mm -hmm. see because on my IG page, I used to just cook and do the videos and post it. I'm a video person. Yeah. 
I'm going to put it up right now and I tell you, that day about 10 persons reached out to me. Um, Miss Donna, they didn't know me as Auntie Donna at the time. I don't even know how I get the name Auntie Donna, <laughs> but I know I get it. Um, she, can I send something for you to donate to somebody? And you know, IG is mostly young people. They were right. mostly young people. And I said yes, and I said, um, so you want me to video for them to see? And that is how it all started oh, to man. where it is now. People is drawn to the openness of, of the program, yeah. the transparency. Okay, well, I send somebody a hundred dollars. I, um, I can see that Yendi name is called and a hundred dollars that she sent. And that is what grows it. It comes with drama and, you know, drama sells. So it's not that I want drama to, it, it just is a part of the package. If me talk loud, because I am very loud at times, and very boisterous and you know the ghetto style and yeah, uh, yeah. so that I just that, saw yes I that saw. that draws people there's people yeah. oh I hate that woman she does everything she put up in her phone or me can't stand her she upset my spirit and those you things you never see her here that is oh, yes it's there it never. is there it is there but then I don't look for negativity yeah, you look I just for look the at good the positive things. that and you're yes, doing yes. yeah yeah and I and I don't let that offend right. me that actually brings people to the program yeah. so that's a part of what has kept it and is still keeping it but i'm trying to move away from the aspect of it now mm. but it still comes with it because anyway you're dealing with people and you are being real you know put on for the camera you just act as the moment comes mm. it, whatever the camera sees is what goes out yeah. you will get this and i think a lot of persons are drawn to that and a lot of persons are drawn to my honesty and a lot of yeah. persons are drawn to seeing what I, I, I said I set out to do being done, you know? And that is what draws people to the program. I and think uh, why it's also so inspiring, like even for me, is yes. you don't have to. You literally don't have to. You could be doing their other thing, things. Yeah, other things. Making money for yourself, doing mm -hmm. you know, bettering yourself, but it's so selfless and it's so beautiful. Yes. And you know when the I when I actually started and I was working, I said the charity does not pay me, and I can say it publicly. Yeah. I don't get paid from it, but it exposes me. Right. So if I'm baking, people wants to support me. If I'm, if any, what I do is, if somebody give me a dollar, I, I make it be known. I don't take the dollar behind the clothes and say, all right, thanks. I make the whole world know, say, Auntie Dana get dollar, or I, do, or I don't take it if I'm not comfortable, you understand? Yeah. And that is what draws people to the program. It's not something that I had sit down and plan say, I want to do charity and me have, have a fierce social media charity and stuff like that. It just came out. Yeah. I'm just work with it. You understand? I absolutely <laughs> understand. Yes, yes. And I, I want to tell you as well, for me, mm -hmm. it's also, it's not just say, this little child in one place here. Yes. I see Dante. Yes. And then I say father. Yes. And then even, you know, Miss Little being so selfless herself, yes, you know, I, she she just lost her dad. Dad, yes. And she's and taking she's care here. of father. It's, it's almost uncle. like the whole community. Yes, yes, You know, yes. It's, it's like you, it's almost like you have inspired everyone to play their own part within part, the community. Definitely. And they have been doing it, but it wasn't just being highlighted because, you know, um, I have bring a spotlight on Mountain View, which is good. Yeah. Um, and it has now expanded beyond yeah. Mountain View, where persons, a lot more charities are born yeah. similar to mine. So persons are seeing that they, they could use, they, their phone could use in a positive way yeah. to help somebody. So big up the other charities out there doing their thing, just yeah. like Auntie Dana also. Yeah. Yes. If, um, if somebody never met you a single day, never came across you ever before. Yes. Tell me some of the words that you would use to say, this is who I am. This is what I care about <sighs> the most. Um, pertaining to the charity or to my personal? To you. Okay, well, Auntie Dana is, very, is a very jovial person. I'm a, I'm very, I'm a very kind person. Lord, I bit me bugger bugger sometimes, <laughs> you know. I'm just well rounded, yeah. you know. I am emotional at times, I don't really show it. A person tend to see the, the, the hard answer, and they don't generally see the soft side to me. Yeah. And honestly, I'm very shy. Hold on now. Yes. We have to pause right there. Auntie Donna, are you shy? Yes, in certain situations. Tell, I'm me, not shy. tell me where you're shy. I'm shy in my personal life, like certain things that you will not get out of me. But I. Because I have a platform and because I have to deal with people, yeah. it's kind of bringing out the shyness mm -hmm. in me. So I'm more open up more, you yeah. know. I was like, one time if I'm to do an interview like this, I would, like God, I would be so nervous mm. and, you know. But it, it brings me out. 
So it does a lot of good. Would you believe me if I told you that I am shy? <laughs> no, I don't yes, No, I, I, I know exactly what he means. That's why yes. I said, tell me what he means. Yes, because I yes, am like that yes, too, you know? I am like that. Yeah. I am like that. Yeah. A person who know me. Where, where do you want the Donna Go brand to go? Because we're not talking the charity now. No, I'm talking about, about the Donna, Donna Go. And that is why I have to be cleaning up certain things now. Um, I want my brand to be worldwide. Yeah. And I, and I see it has reached to that level already. And I would want it to go further. So, you know, I'm working on a lot of stuff. I have my Sanders line. Yes. And you see how we're one of my mm -hmm. Sanders. I have. We're, we're a size seven and a half. <laughs> walk with none in the trunk. A joke, a joke. You know, <laughs> um, I have my t shirt lines coming up. Yes. And there's a lot more things that I'm putting my name out there to which I do not wish to speak on. Yeah. No, my pudding, my baking. I would love to have my cakes and puddings all over the world. You can get it in the duty freeze in the shops yes. and stuff like that, you know? And, the, and nice the opportunity is there just for you to, for me to utilize it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And when you think about yourself, when yes. you think about yourself as a little girl. Yes. Over radios. Ah, Jesus. Above rocks too. Mm -hmm. And you think about where you are now. Honestly, I it is a surreal moment. Yeah. You know, I went downtown yesterday and as I came out the van, everybody, Auntie Dana, Auntie Dana, persons were coming up to me. Persons were calling at me and I, I stopped and I talked to them and everybody want to take picture with me and everybody want to hug me up, you know, you know, COVID and I'm saying to myself, a COVID time. <laughs> and when I went in where I went, come back and I went in the van, I was saying to somebody in the van that, Lord God, we can't believe I made this. And then I just used to walk through town where nobody don't know, everybody just automatically, I showed Auntie Dana and everybody is warm. Mm. It's not that nobody has seen and I say, Lord, but until then I'm proud of you, you know, and those are the sentiments that I get and I, it feels good, yeah. honestly feels good. What was life like for you growing up? Well, life had its ups and downs. I grew up with my grandmother for most of the part till I was about 14. Um, then my father took me to Redis, I sadly passed away um, this year. And when I grew up, my grandmother taught me a lot, hard life. Um, to share, um, to love people, you know, to treat people well. And uh, when I went with my father, you know, I became, I, I, I came from not having certain things to having everything thrown in my face, yeah. to meeting a lot of different types of people, to having a privileged life. And then I left all that life that I know was wealthy life and came to Mountain View, had to start all over again, you know? So... What, what made you come to Mountain View? Well, it was my baby daddy, you know, I was a disobedient child, mm. you know, so, <laughs> and I'm not, I don't regret it because I have three beautiful kids for him, yeah. and I have one now that I adopted, so I have four kids. Yeah. Yes. And then when you start at ground zero now, come in with us as a shake up. Yes. Because your life, yeah. not perfect, but charmed, right? You're mm -hmm. not struggling, you're not looking for your next meal. No. And then no. you go over Mountain View now. Yes. To start over, walk yes. through that. When, when I went over to Mountain View, um, I got pregnant, my first daughter. Um, I had to go and look at work, etc. Things were very hard. Yeah. My baby father wasn't even working at that time. You know, it was all on me. And I started to go around and look work. I get work in a hairdressing shop. Then I started to go to town to sell bag juice. Um, earrings, mm -hmm. soap, powder, any little thing, umbrella, yeah. if the rain started to fall, I would you sell stuff. I, I, I never sit down, my trust a shop. I did everything. Yeah. I, and then I worked at the airport and I, I'm always a saver. So I work, save and help myself to where I am. Mm -hmm. Yes, I never sit down and look for handouts. You know, it's, I'm listening to you now and yes. I'm looking at you and the lady who was my caregiver mm -hmm. when I was growing up. Yeah. She used to live in Mountain View. Yeah, wow. And I remember when we used to, you know, go for her sometimes, her and her daughter, they'd come and spend every Christmas with us. And, yes. You know, that's, she was like my second mother. Yeah. Really my second mother, you yes. know? And I think about 
how much she poured into her daughter. Yes. And she wanna make sure her daughter educated mm -hmm. and she work hard and then you know come out of a certain space because they must say, you know, you have to do more in your life and so on. Yeah. And I'm listening to you know and I'm thinking about her, but I'm also thinking so many people think that if you live in a certain area, yes, that's is it for your life. No. You are doomed to a certain type no. of reality. And you are living testimony. Testimony, that yes. And it doesn't have to be that way. Definitely. And funny enough, there are a lot of professional people that comes out of the yes. ghetto. Yes. We have doctors, we have lawyers, yes. we have police, we have nurses. But people seem to stigmatize the ghetto as with gangs and rebels and stuff like yeah. that. They don't see the good side. Yeah. In the ghetto, if it's 100 person there, you have 70% of them who want better, who excel. Yeah. And you have another 30% who just want to stay in their situation right. and in the position that they are in. So the way you live does not define who you become. A word, Auntie. Thank you. A word. Yes, yeah, yes, it, yes. It shouldn't define you. No, no. Yeah. And it's no. not to say that, no. Like you say, you can't hustle your way out oh. of a circumstance, no, you know? No, no. You can. Yeah. You can. Hard work and determination. Sometimes, you know, a lot of people would look at it and say, why? I have no education. I never have any CXC. I never have any DXD. I never have any MXD. I have no form of... <laughs> Yeah. There, are no, there are no form of the D's then and when they, and I never let that deter me from pushing yeah. forward, right. from working. I go to the office attendant. I do any type of job. I never look at it and say, okay, so she have our nine subject, the mommy not have none. She can excel and I can sit on the floor. I, I'm always pushing and I instill, even though I never had any subjects because I never pay much attention to doing those things at school. I made sure that my children them came up and get what I did not get. Same way. And they all came up and got their subject. My son did eight subjects and he passed with seven, ones, twos and threes. My daughter did seven and she passed out with one in accounts, two in maths, you know? So it, 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 it does not determine yeah. who because your mother never have no subjects, you are going to become and come up and not have no subjects and, and it, it continues. Yeah, it yeah, continues. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. Talk truth. You feel good in yourself about the children, don't no? yeah. <laughs> yeah. you? feel good. Definitely. You know, I'm I, so proud. I see you. You're spirit. Yes, uh, my son yourself. is a soldier in the U.S. Army. Uh, my daughter, she works for an um, insurance company. She sells insurance. The small one, she's now working at the airport. And she's also going to school. You know? So And, they are, and the, the big one, she's still going to school. Also online classes. So And they are all abroad. And I have my four-year-old right at my feet here in Jamaica taking care of him. So you have your little four-year-old now. Yes, so some, Joshua. Some would say, all right, you get your three and you them out the door. How you got to take up this on your head again uh, well, with little Joshua, Joshua? Actually, he's my nephew. Yes. That's my sister's child. And there was a situation going on with him and I had to step in yeah. and take him because I never wanted him to go into a home or anybody else having him. So, and he's the best little blessing in my life, Wendy. Oh. He brings so much joy to me. You know, everything that I do, always, God always have a way of working it out. Oh, and because he done to say, Joshua would have to be in my life. So I'm so happy he's adopted. So he's my adopted child and my nephew in one. But he's legally your yes, son? Yes, legally my son, yes. I'm happy about that and him is right there. Right there old Auntie Dana. Now nah, let me an inch and actually bring me some. I'm a company. Yeah. Yes, I was just going to say, you know, I bet any money, say Joshy, come in like a little handbag. Yeah, that is every you. little thing and him taught me, him over taught me. <laughs> him is a talker like me and Missy say where him get it from. My mother is a parrot. <laughs> Look like it running on the yeah, family, yeah, Auntie Donna. Yeah, me and the parrot. <laughs> yeah. Me talk to him, take up. You know, but he was, yeah, he was a bit shy in certain things also. But, you know, yeah. he's coming along fine and doing. Yeah. yeah. When do you think you will feel as though your mission is accomplished? Very soon, in a way, Yendi. Very soon. Um, I think that I don't want to build any more house in Kingston. Mm -hmm. Not saying I won't. Um, depends on the circumstances. I want to change up the charity a bit more in depth, and um, where certain things that I do in the past, I won't do it again. Um, like for instance, building house for young persons who I see could go out there and go work and build up themselves. Yeah. But you know, it, I cannot say I am sorry that I did what I did. I am not sorry. Just open my eyes, right. and I think all of them that get it deserve it. To be honest, right. um, it is their blessing, and you cannot 
want to block anybody else's blessing. But in the future, I'm catering more for persons who are disabled. I want to start help young people doing business and I want to start help persons in school, etc. Mm. You know, the basic it's a light charity and go. Yeah. We don't want one person to be getting so many millions and yeah. you know, we want to utilize that to share for other friends. So I'm thinking about a lot of changes if I do come back with it. Then I want to go there. I want to live back how I used to live. Carefree, free, do my own thing. But now I don't even have the time for myself much anymore. You think you could ever go back to living carefree after everybody know your name and know your face? What do you think? <sighs> of course. You know, I will still have my platform. Yeah. But I will use it for different things. But everybody, you know, sometimes you are born to do a certain things and it's it, you know. Yes, yeah, sometimes you are born to do it. Mm -hmm. I would say purpose, you yes. know. Yes. I and I'm fulfilling my purpose. I strongly believe in God and God has given me a mantle to do, run with and I have to run with it and you know it's gonna come with a lot of things remember you know if you know anything about your bible Wendy you would have known the story of Nehemiah hmm. Nehemiah was building a wall and he get so much backlash and tear down persons were in his face you know the Shambhala and the Tobias but Nehemiah persevered hmm. because he never lose focus of what his purpose was that's right and that is what happened to me I've gotten a lot of backlash, a lot of tear down. But I remember the word of God. I remember Nehemiah's story. I remember Job. I remember all those prophets that went through situations. Yeah. I remember the, the three evil boys who went in the fire and came out. Yes. And those are the things that motivates me to say, if them are prophet and them can do it, then, with me. All right. So, you know, each day I just get up with a new lease on life. Just get up and say, yeah, man, today I'm going to do this and just move on. Yes. You know, so I'm going to wake up and just move up tomorrow <laughs> because I'm going to say, yes, Nehemiah, uh, Job. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yes. If you could think of like one particular instance where you thought you were going to be flat on your face and you thought that was it. And when you look back at, at it, you're just like, I don't know how in God's name I got past that. And move beyond that what would that be okay um i would have to say on the program or in, in my personal life whichever you prefer okay to i would have to say on the program um there were some allegations brought uh, uh, against me that i support guns and i buy shots and stuff like that and that was a defamation of my character yeah. a lot of persons believed it and i was like they're saying, why would somebody tell that drastic lie on me? Yeah. And it was somebody on the program who I helped, who allowed people to use her to do it. And I that had hit me to the point of, I am, oh my God. If you see, it, I, I always said that fear is evidence of things. Appearing real. Appearing false real. False evidence appearing false real. False evidence appearing real. And if you saw that video, or you saw that you who don't know me would believe because of how it was bringing across. And I, I, I never came back out and, and say, and, and toe to toe. I went on my knees and I said, Ooh. God, you see that I am not guilty of none of these charges that was set upon me. And I prayed and I fasted and I cried. And I said, this is, I said, how can I get up back from this? And you know what the Holy Spirit said? Donna, them beat me, them chain me up, them give me vinegar for drink, and then tie me to the cross. Them nail me to the cross. So if I can come back, and he said, I see you, mm. I know your pain right now, I know what you are going through, and I am going to lift you up. I am going to set you up on a standard. And that is exactly what God did. And you know, I like a couple weeks after it happened, God used the same person who put up that person to let the person voice here in the video that person that telling her what to say. And and you know, she has come around, she has come to me and I've done nothing against her, but it was, it's not like that anymore. And you know, it is an example for a lot of persons out there that yes. a lot of persons are in prison. A lot of persons die for things that they have never done yes. or have, have any acknowledgement yes. of because persons just find it in their heart to be malicious to against it and yeah. to make against and against them. So that was one of my points and it is a testimony. And you know, in life, whatever you are doing, you're going to get backlash. And I have passed that and I can now move on and help persons go through situations like that. 
where people, I, I, I think I'm a voice for the voiceless. Mm -hmm. When I say that, I mean that a lot of persons, a lot of persons reach out to me during that situation and say, Miss Dana, why me know where you are going to treat happen to me? People just tell life for me, so, mm -hmm. and I know um, persons from prison. Yeah. There was this man who called me from prison, say, he cried, he prayed, he said, I am in prison for something I never did. And the evidence that they brought against me, let it look like I did it, and he knows that he didn't did it. So there are a lot of persons in the world who are facing um, prosecution for things that they have never done. Mm. But you know, the God that I serve always uplifts me from a situation. Won't he do it? Yes. Won't yes. he do it? Definitely. You have people who look at you. Yes. And are inspired by you. Yeah. <laughs> One right here. What do uh, you say to those people who want to make an impact in the world? They yes. want to leave a mark and leave the world a little different than they found it. What, yes. what encouragement would you give First to them? thing I would say, be yourself. Yes. Don't change to please the crowd. Don't change to please the atmosphere. Don't change to please the person that you are with. Be you. And once you be you, Persons, some of them not going like you for who you are, but you have genuine persons who say, okay, she's real, she's raw, and this is Auntie Dana, mm -hmm. this is Yendi. You understand? Mm -hmm. Once you try to change yourself to get person's perception of you as, all right, for me, you know, everybody know Auntie Dana Baga Baga. <laughs> everybody know that I'm boisterous. <laughs> everybody know that I'm loud. And everybody know that I can come with a lot of jokes. I'm just a well-rounded person. And, uh, you know, somebody called me the other day and said, I want to know where you have a Jamaica, so. I want to know what you do. I want to know what it is about you that you can have 7,000 people sitting down with you for four hours. They're not doing that for the prime minister. They're not doing that for the pastor. So I was so with you and I could only say, why me not know? Me I ask myself that too. Because I am being me. Yes. And persons are drawn to that That's right. realness. Yeah. I'm not pretending, I'm not coming up on the phone. I don't know what to say, so I'm not. <laughs> And if I do it just for drama. Auntie Donna, you're not doing what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, throw, throw, throw. And if I do that, Wendy, it's just for drama. So it's just it's just all about being me, yeah. being you, being people accepting you for who you are. Yeah. People having confidence and trust in you. And a lot of people look up to me. A lot of people worship me and I don't think that it should be so. A lot of persons see me as this Facebook God. And I have to tell you, when sometimes when I read some message, I have to say to them, say, no, me as somebody like you too. Yeah. Don't put me up to that level, you know, mm -hmm. and stuff like don't that. Don't put me on no pedestal. pedestal but the cause... truth is, it's inspiring. Yes, It definitely. really is inspiring. You know, definitely. normally, I feel like you see these things from a distance, yes. but to see it close up yes. in a relatable way. Yes, where you um, can relate to Right it. around you. It's true, inspiring. True. Definitely. Yeah. And yes, definitely. My last thing is for people who look on and want to support you and support the charity, how do they do that? Well, um, we are going on a break next month in July, sometime in July, which I will announce. But we have a, a, a policy where you call Miss Paula. It's just basically me or Miss Paula, triple nine six eight two two five four zero ninety twenty one five six zero zero seven one zero. You call and you have to speak to me or Paula, and we we'll give you details on how to send the money via Western Union MoneyGram or wherever you want to send it. We do cash up, but it goes through somebody to reach to me. When that donation comes to us, I personally, Dana Marigo, has to call the donor and say, "All right, Auntie Dana received this." and who must get it, and I don't give up donation unless I speak directly to the donor, and that is what keeps the program going on. And everything has to be on video when it comes to donation to give up. My last word is, what is, I just want to know, what is your mantra? What is the thing that you live by? What is the quote or the saying or the affirmation that you say, this is what I live by? Okay, I live by, I am blessed, I am handpicked, chosen by God, blessed and highly favored mm. and that is what i tell myself every day and the other thing is i can do all things through christ who strengthen me that is my matter but i am handpicked chosen by god blessed and highly favored is what carries me through every day i am handpicked chosen, chosen by, by god, god blessed, blessed and, and highly favored, favored yes me say if you bless <laughs> one more time and Donna, thank you so thank much you. It's, it's been a pleasure oh it's my pleasure girl <laughs> not let me start it's Probably been yeah. my absolute pleasure to yeah. get to know you oh, on, a, on a deeper you. level more yeah. than what i see come yes. and see and uh, know everything 
but it's been really lovely to get to know Thank you. Thank you, and it's a pleasure coming here. And Blanca people, the camera don't do no justice for when you <laughs> see her. She's so beautiful. She her does. skin, her teeth. She just look like a little. Remember, don't take it from me. Camera don't do nothing for Yendi. What me say? Sometimes I say Wendy, sometimes I say Yendi, but you know I don't know. <laughs> it not trouble me. It not trouble me one bit. Thank yes, you, Auntie Donna. Yes, thank you. know some head swell, you know. <laughs> Auntie Donna, some nice. Yes, yeah, she is, definitely.